But the point that I want to represent here is that when I am eccentrically oriented, I will be moving in that direction. So I wanted to clarify the concentric to eccentric yielding versus overcoming element. And I think the pelvic diaphragm is probably the easiest place to represent this and to visualize it. So if we, if we said that we had some sort of midline representation between the full excursion of the pelvic diaphragm as this midpoint, then if I, if I am concentrically oriented, then the, the fibers would be in a shortened position relative to this midpoint. And if I'm in a lengthened position, which would be the eccentric orientation, the fibers would be longer. But the point that I want to represent here is that when I am eccentrically oriented, I will be moving in that direction when the pelvic diaphragm is eccentrically oriented. So if I was looking at, at say, a, a deep squat, I would have to eccentrically orient the pelvic, the anterior pelvic diaphragm. To, to descend into the squat because if I if the anterior diaphragm was concentrically oriented, I couldn't go down into it, I would move back. So this would be representative of a hinge position or a deadlift, and this would be representative of a, of a squat. And so this is the, the thing that we have to understand is that the eccentric orientation of any muscle allows motion to occur in that direction because this is an expansion. Uh, representation and this is a compressive representation and I cannot move into that that situation now if I am concentric oriented so the muscle is in a shortened position by whatever activity that we're selecting and I need to absorb force so so for instance if I had to to stop or slow down but I had to maintain the muscle in a shortened position I would basically be yielding so there would be a give way which, which a lot of folks would probably say, well, that's an eccentric contraction, but I'm still in a concentric position, so then it becomes confusing. So it's easier uh, from my perspective to say that I am concentrically oriented, but I am yielding, I am absorbing that force. And so this is what I would use, say, in a, in a uh, low amplitude plyometric scenario where I would not want to be eccentrically oriented because that would have a large excursion of range of motion associated with the eccentric orientation. If I wanted a, a, a low amplitude, I stay concentric oriented, but I'm using a repetitive yielding contraction, which I would then turn into an overcoming contraction to produce the force from that position. If I am eccentrically oriented, that means I'm in a lengthened position, so I have a much larger excursion of range of motion, but again, it's what direction do I need to go? And so again, if I am eccentrically oriented, say in a, in a deep squat, and I was yielding, I would still be absorbing force at the bottom. So this would be at the bottom of a clean when I'm making the catch, I need to be eccentrically oriented and then absorbing. To come up out of the, uh, of the clean, I would need to then produce an overcoming contraction from a position of eccentric orientation because of the depth of the squat. So now you can kind of see how this clarifies by position and then what activity am I trying to do? Am I, am I absorbing force or am I producing force from those positions?